good day my dear students and welcome to chips and game for rats the charge for the day shall be pneumonia when i say pneumonia it can mean lobar pneumonia bronco pneumonia both of these are independent essays of the world also we should know that there is another entity called interstitial pneumonia i would like you people to kindly analyze and compile the plethora of questions that are possible in theory practical and viva voce from this talk now let us see them one by one the first one shall be lobar pneumonia low bar that means it is involving a lobe or sometimes multiple lobes or the entire lung can be involved hence the name low bar pneumonia the theory of it is very well dealt with in the other channels of rats and game here we shall restrict ourselves to gross and microscopic before i go into the morphology proper i would like you people to kindly appreciate this mode of spread you find that this is a wonderful diagram of the alveolar spaces and the terminal bronchioles the alveoli are interconnected by means of the pores of cone the pores of cone and between the terminal bronchiole and the alveoli we have got the canals of lamp also you find that the bronchioli can be interconnected by means of the channels of martin these three things we should remember that is why you find that an infection from one focus spreads to the other and ultimately the entire lobe is getting involved as we are seeing in this case now look at this particular lung specimen i find that the lower lobe is solid and it is more or like liver like in consistency also the appearance is like that hence the name hepatization it is red in color hence it is called red hepatization subsequently you find that it becomes whitish pink or rather gray in color and this is called as gray hepatization all said and done you find that the entire lobe is involved and the lesion is restricted to one lobe so this i would like you people to appreciate the modes of spread and what is the gross morphology it is called hepatization because it becomes liver like in consistency and appearance now what happens whenever there is an infection the initial stage will be a mild edema and a transudy there will be of course bacteria in these spaces but then i am finding it is filled with almost a acellular fluid the alveolar spaces but subsequently i find that this is the interalveolar septae the septae becomes widened because of the engorgement of the capillaries there are multiple capillaries within the septae they all get distended so this is called engorgement of the capillaries and thickening of the inter alveolar septae from which there will be a oozing out of fluid and the cells initially there will be the rbcs followed by the wbc when i say wbc it will be the neutrophils so what i am seeing over here is a collection of inflammatory cells there is also a little bit of fibrin as a result of which there is a contraction that is why i am finding a clear space that is surrounding the inflammatory exudate so also you see that all the alveolar spaces are having an inflammatory exudate coming back to the lobar pneumonia it is a disease 
that last for about 10 to 12 days. There will be one to two days of congestion followed by a red hepatization. The RBCs will be there about three days followed by a white hepatization or a gray hepatization. Again, three to four days. Finally, everything gets cleared, which is called as a resolution, the last one or two days. This is the classical picture. But nowadays, because of the advent of antibiotics and correct diagnosis, all these are rapidly converged or telescope. So it gets over within a period of four or five days. And this is an X-ray picture. I find that there is a consolidation of the lobe that is shown on the X-ray. It is not patchy. The entire middle lobe is being involved and it is showing a hepatization or a consolidation. This picture is again worth it. Here, it is called as red hepatization. These are the engorged capillaries. This diagram you people can draw in your ear. And ultimately, there is a passage of RBCs. Along with it, you find that there is an active chemotaxis and the neutrophils also move towards it. So initially, it is a red hepatization followed by a gray hepatization. These cells, after a few days are replaced by the macrophages for clearance, which we can call as a gray hepatization. Ultimately, after everything is cleared, it becomes resolved, which is called as resolution. So remember the stages, stage of congestion, stage of red hepatization, stage of gray hepatization, and stage of resolution. That will be the lobar pneumonia. Now, what am I seeing over here? This is a normal lung. There is no element of consolidation that is seen. And this is a normal bronchus. Coming back to the alveolar spaces, this is how our normal lung appears. I would like you people to kindly compare these with any of the histological pictures that are shown. I find that there is an inflammatory exudate that is filling all the alveolar spaces. The normal is shown for the sake of comparison. So I hope you people know the lobar pneumonia. The causes, etc., you people can read up from your theory. It can be a pneumococcal pneumonia, it can be cephalococcal, streptococcal, hemophilus influenzae, or the HASAC, etc. The entire list you people should read up. The next one shall be the bronchopneumonia. When compared with the lobar pneumonia, this is again a gross specimen and this is at a higher magnification. This dark brown is supposed to be the normal lung and I'm finding irregular patchy map-like areas. This pale brown color, these are areas of consolidation. Patchy areas of consolidation involving the entire lobe or sometimes the entire lung. Look at this higher magnification, multiple irregular patchy areas of consolidation. Sometimes they can become confluent, they join together. And this is typical of a bronchopneumonia. Patchy areas in between you find normal lung parenchyma. Compare it with this one once again. So here I find that the total lobe is involved, whereas here it is patchy with intervening normal parenchyma. And what about the microscope? What is the name of it? It is a bronchopneumonia. This is a normal bronchus. This is the peribronchial alveoli that I'm seeing. Smooth muscle will be seen for contraction of the bronch. There is nothing over here. Whereas in this case, there is a dense inflammation. I am able to see multiple small dots. They are all neutrophils that are there and they are all peribronchial in location. As I go further away, the alveoli appear relatively clear. That is why I'm finding patchy areas of consolidation and then normal alveoli. And when I look at it 
in the X-ray. This is how it appears. There are multiple patchy areas of consolidation separated by the normal parenchyma. This is about bronchopneumonia. The third type, which I would like you people to recall, is the interstitial pneumonia. Interstitial means it is the intervening space. So here there are cells such as the lymphocytes and plasma cells. Normally it occurs in a viral pneumonia, a viral pneumonia or mycoplasma pneumonia. Here the alveolar spaces are clear. This one we can mention for the sake of completion. There are different types of pneumonia such as lobar pneumonia, bronchopneumonia, interstitial pneumonia. And based on the etiology, there can be an aspiration pneumonia or it can be a bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, fungal pneumonia, etc. Now, how do we summarize the whole thing? This is a very important diagram that we should have in mind. This is a lobar pneumonia and this is a bronchopneumonia. In a lobar pneumonia, I'm finding that the entire lobe is involved. So it becomes firm, liver-like in consistency, called as hepatization. Initially, there is a red hepatization. Whereas in the case of bronchopneumonia, I am finding multiple irregular patchy areas of consolidation. They are all separated by the normal lung parenchyma. Sometimes these can become confluent so as to create a larger area. It will more or less resemble a lobar pneumonia, but not exactly in the later stages. So this can happen in multiple diseases including tuberculosis, which you have seen earlier. So this will be the summary of it. I would like you people to kindly see the importance of it. First, the normal lung. So what is the appearance? What is the normal bronchus? No inflammation, clear alveoli. Here again, clear alveolar spaces. And the lobar pneumonia, what are the modes of spread? the pores of corn, canals of lung gut, and the channels of martin, leading to the entire lobe being involved, which is called as consolidation. There is an area of red hepatization, gray hepatization. Finally, everything gets resolved. This is how we look at it in the x -ray. And this is the inflammatory infiltrate. Initially, there is a red hepatization, along with that some neutrophils. Later on, everything is being cleared by the macrophages, and it becomes almost normal. Please do remember this. It is important for you people. And the sources of answers are given in rats, game, tips, and problems are by. These are all the different modes of questions, which I would like you people to analyze and implement. Thank you.